Hi, in this video I will show you how to perform frequency response analysis in MATLAB Simulink. I have two simple examples which I'm going to demonstrate them. With this method, even if you have components uh, that are physical components from SimEscape library like these, still you are able to analyze them. We can perform frequency response an analysis as well as impedance measurement. So let us start with impedance measurement. Here I have an RLC circuit and my target is to find the impedance of this circuit. I have to first create a transfer function. So transfer function is voltage divided by the current. So I put a current source and I just have a current source and then I measure the voltage. So the current goes through this RLC and we measure the voltage. So then uh, of course uh, the division of voltage to current will give us the impedance. Here are the converters that converts SimEscape to Simulink. And in this case, I put an input port and this is the output which goes to the oscilloscope. Instead of input port, you could also connect a function generator, for example, if you really want to model this in time domain. Okay, so what we have to do is to click on the input, right click on it, linear analysis, select input perturbation. Click on output, when it's blue, right click on it. Linear analysis, output measurement. So this input perturbation will come here. It's actually the current and we measure the output. So the ratio between output to input in this case gives us the impedance of this uh, network. So now you click on analysis, control design, linear analysis. Okay, so now we can plot the body diagram. So this is the transfer function, which is the impedance that we want. You can double click on this and maybe change the scale, magnitude to absolute, maybe to log scale. Uh, we could also change the frequency, obviously, but I keep it as radian per second. So we can do a quick check. The resonance happens at 10 power 6. This is correct because I put the value of inductor is 10 power minus 3. The value of uh, capacitor is 10 power minus 9. So basically the omega will be 1 over square root of LC, which gives us 10 power 6. And we also notice that at low frequency, Obviously, the capacitance uh, impedance becomes very large, so it takes over. So at low frequency, uh, this branch is more capacitive, so that's why the phase is minus 90 degree, and also magnitude goes high. And at high frequency, the branch becomes more inductive, so the phase is plus 90, and also the impedance magnitude goes up. Okay, so now let's say we have a resistor in parallel with this circuit. In the past video, I mentioned that you don't want to put a current source in series with an inductor. In this case, the inductor has its own snubber. Basically, if you double click on it, so you see that there is a parallel capacitor to this. Therefore, I could connect the current source directly in series with the inductor. But let us add a resistor in parallel to this branch. Okay, and then let us put the value 1 mega ohm. And we perform the analysis again. In this case, if you click on border plot, it will plot a new one. But if you click on border plot one, it will plot it on top of the previous one. Okay, so you can see that the resonance frequency obviously will not change because the value of capacitor and resistor are the same. But at low frequency and at high frequency, we have some changes. Obviously, when the frequency is very small, then this branch is uh, more capacitive and it has a very huge impedance. So when it's parallel with this one, then the impedance of the resistor will take over. So that's why at very low frequency, the magnitude of the impedance becomes 10 power 6, which is the value of this resistor. And also the phase goes to zero because the circuit becomes more or less a resistive circuit. And at very high frequency, it's the same scenario. So the value becomes 10 power 6 and also the phase goes to zero. So everything is very good. So we have learned how to perform a simple impedance measurement using um, linearization method. I have another example here. So first I comment this. Okay, so this is the second example, which again, I put input perturbation and output measurement. In this case, I have an RC circuit. So there is an input voltage that comes to this RC circuit and we are measuring the output voltage. So this is a low pass filter. We're going to analyze it. I'm going to delete this and make a new one. 
Okay, so if I click on both the plot, okay, so this is basically the frequency response. It's a simple low pass filter. At low frequency, obviously, all the voltage will transfer because the capacitor becomes open circuit. And as we increase the frequency, basically, the voltage across the capacitor can decay, so the transfer function decays. We can also do other analysis. For example, we can perform a step response measurement. Obviously, we notice that at beginning, the signal should be zero because at beginning, the capacitor is, uh, is short-circuited and gradually the capacitor will be charged. So this will be the step response of this circuit. Okay, so we have learned how to perform frequency response analysis using linearization. In some cases, however, your model may have nonlinear components. Uh, in that case, the lin linearization method may not work and also may give you a completely wrong answer. So you really want to verify if the response given by the linearization method is correct or not. That one can be done through another method, which is called uh, simulation-based frequency response estimation. This is a topic that I will cover it in the next video. All right. Bye.